True or false, the metrics of a market on AirDNA may change. That's false. It's kind of a trick question. I'll get into why. But if you didn't know that answer, be very careful with AirDNA. The reason is because I have talked with a lot of investors who are relying on AirDNA too much. And AirDNA presents themselves in a way where the data appears more accurate than it is. We're going to go through some examples. They're not even my own examples. I found some videos online of other people real-time testing AirDNA and finding errors with the data. My name is Danny. I run this channel. I've been a super host since... 2014 and I'm also an Airbnb investor with my last property having a cash on cash return of 90%. That's about three times higher than what the average investor would be ecstatic about. And I do that with a very precise strategy that I've gotten into in other videos on this channel. At the end of this video, I'll recommend two of those videos if you'd like to continue watching. Now back to that question. If you're looking at historical data, and that's mostly what AirDNA is, those numbers should not change. Now, if we're looking at the regulation number, those might that might change. Now, if the numbers change, that of course calls into question about how accurate that data is and how much are you relying on that data. Like I said before, I get calls. It's it's really painful, to be honest, because once you make a purchase of a home that's a big purchase, you can't just sell it. You might sell it in six months, 12 months. But the last time I had this, I talked with a gentleman who made a purchase and he was getting $12,000 a month. This was much less than he was expecting based on the data. His expenses was $10,000 a month. This is a bad investment from the get-go. Now, his initial estimates were wrong anyways. But when you're looking at data, when you're making an investment, you want your revenue to be twice that of your costs. Throughout this video, I'm going to give some tips and tricks on how you can filter data to make it a little bit more accurate, what to look out for that is causing the data to be inaccurate and might lead you to a bad Airbnb investment. And then at the end, I'm gonna introduce you to a tool that I actually just found. I'm dedicating a whole new video on that tool itself. But at the end of this video, I'm gonna introduce you to it and show you exactly how I am using it. I have nothing against AirDNA. The point of this video is to help you make the best decision when you're going to buy an Airbnb. If you make a good decision at the beginning, that is smooth sailing until you sell it. If you make a poor decision, you're having nightmare upon nightmare. I have personally talked with many hosts. Trust me on this. So let's get you right here. Let me know in the comments if there's specific questions you want to go over about how to identify a profitable market. In my program right now, I have just released a list of, there's more than 200 markets in the USA that I was looking at, but I have narrowed it down to eight and have done a deeper dive analysis and I have all of my points on what exactly I'm looking for and how I pinpoint a market and a profitable property. Speaking of which, Profitable Properties is my newest book I released last year. Section two, Vacation Rental Market Analysis, goes very deep into the process that I used to buy what I'm calling the Belmonte penthouse that is getting a 90% cash on cash return. The following video is probably the most famous Airbnb influencer using AirDNA and finding some faulty data. So now let's go to the second one, hot tub and pool. Great. Let's take a look here. Let's open the Airbnb listing. Oh, doesn't even exist anymore. Great, bad data. So now our top two comps here aren't even reliable data. If the two top producing properties in a market don't exist, what does that do to the data? That inflates the data. How I do it is I look for a five-year payback period. I estimate my gross revenue. If it's $100,000 a year, I can spend in that market $500,000. That to me tells me my revenue is twice as much as my expenses. That's going to be probably a good investment. That's going to cash flow very nicely. This problem, though, is very common on AirDNA. Always click open that data and see if that listing actually exists. Now, a workaround here. When you are looking at data, if there's filters and there should be, what you want to do to somewhat get around this problem is to make sure there's one of two filters you can use. One is that the listing has at least 10 reviews. The other filter you can use is that the listing has been available on Airbnb, meaning that AirDNA in this case has scraped that listing for at least 180 days, because we're really only interested in listings that are full-time listings or nearly full-time listings. In this next video, the data is showing two identical listings with different revenue numbers. Uh-oh, is this the same property? Or just, yes, it is the same property. So they have two separate listings for Airbnb and VRBO. And again, VRBO has this one 
at 76,000. Oh, whoops. And this one at 59,000. So I think what's going on there, this is also very common, is the listings have to be linked in the back end themselves for AirDNA to pick up that these are actually the same two listings. Because realistically, it should be very easy. It's got the same number of bathrooms, same number of bedrooms, and the photos are in all likelihood exactly identical. This one was a little bit different, but if you look at all the other photos, they're gonna be the same. And so there should be a process where it easily matches that. But if there's two listings in the market, and let's say those are two high-performing listings, that muddies the data. It's also strange where the same identical listing has different revenue in the first place. The woman in that video is Avery Carl, and I'm not picking on her. In fact, she runs a great business at the shorttermshop.com, who, where she helps actually through her network of real estate agents, Airbnb investors choose a good Airbnb with an uh, uh, agent who is actually an investor. So I recommend her service. What she didn't notice, and what I want you to notice is the highest grossing listing actually has zero reviews. It's in the top right corner of the listing. So this is actually the highest grossing property of any of the properties that we've looked at. Let's check them out. They're only on VRBO, which is a little little weird. So ask yourself, how did AirDNA estimate the annual revenue of a listing with zero reviews? I don't know how. That would be pretty difficult. I wouldn't rely on that number at all, but it's in the data. It's being in that overall dashboard, this data with zero reviews, they've estimated somehow the annual revenue, that's in the market data, unless you're specifically filtering it out. This last one is from an article via HostAway. Uh, I'm not picking on HostAway, I'm not picking on AirDNA. The problem comes down to people not having an ability to interpret data. I may have a better than average ability, possibly I used to be a CPA, in fact, I was that at Airbnb way back in 2013, but I can look at this right here and tell you right away, this is bad data. You're trying to tell me that in Houston, Texas, a gigantic market, and in fact, on my list as being one of the top markets, investable markets, has an average annual revenue of $12,400. I mean, uh, Airbnbs and third world countries are making more than that. So what happened here? Whoever wrote this article, they're including probably all the data, including private rooms, bedrooms, as well as two and three studios. And they're including the worst performing and the best performing. There's a lot more worse hosts than good hosts. So when you combine everything, you get an average annual revenue of 12,400, average occupancy of 45%. If I was getting either of those numbers, that would 45%, that would be terrible, terrible, terrible. And let me tell you, even if you have a basic listing, this is an important point, you can still get an occupancy, the same occupancy as the nicest place. Okay, let me say that again, because it's important. Even if you have a basic Airbnb, your occupancy, not your nightly rate, but your occupancy should be, could be in line with the most luxurious places in your market. If we're talking studio, studio, one bedroom, one bedroom. The difference is you're going to charge less, but you should still be getting the same amount of occupancy with a correct pricing strategy. I have a playlist on my channel as well, all about pricing strategy, how to set your base price. What is your minimum price? Should you use the maximum price? My strategy is a two-step strategy. We start with your base price basically, and then we go into the customizations. It's very easy once you learn it, and it has the biggest effect on your profitable Airbnb. I think it has upwards of a 50% effect. If you don't know what you're doing, that you're pricing correctly, you're gonna make 50% more revenue. I have a new service where I'll actually manage your revenue. I started that with a listing in Michigan. The host was getting 500 bucks. I booked them out for 800 bucks after they did started doing my service. And you can see the screenshot there. I was curious if they had gotten that much before and, and, and they had not. So it's worth your time to go after this video and look at a few of my, my pricing strategy vid videos featuring Price Lab. That is my recommended partner. If you want to use them, by the way, you can use the code optimize for one month free. Plus I think it's 10 bucks off your first bill. I'm gonna mention them a little bit later in this video with another couple free goodies, so stick around for that. To wrap up this video, I just wanna introduce you to some of my vacation rental market analysis concepts. I break out all markets into two, discovered and undiscovered. Now, neither one is correct or incorrect. I prefer undiscovered because there's simply less competition there. It's easier for me to be the best in the market. A couple other rules to watch out for when you're using these data tools is that first, go to the actual Airbnb listing and then look at the nightly rate of the Airbnb tool. Is it the actual nightly rate or is it the nightly rate with the cleaning fee, with the local taxes and the Airbnb fee, sometimes, which is 30%. If the tool is taking that, they're overstating revenue by 30%. 
I have two rules to finish up. One, be conservative. Always, always, always be conservative. If the purchase price doesn't make sense with your revenue estimate, don't do it. Rule number two, at whatever size home you're going to invest in, you want the nicest two bedroom, the nicest studio, the nicest mansion, five, six, seven bedroom. Why? Because you're going to work the same on a studio or a three or four bedroom, but you're going to make a lot more here. So for me, it makes sense to go as big as you can in that investment comfortably while being conservative. Now, the tool that I want to introduce, I'm very excited about introducing. I've done a few short form video contents on this. I'm doing a long form video content on this because it's accurate. First of all, I've confirmed its accuracy. Imagine a map and it tells you with dots where the most profitable zones and the least profitable zones are in the market that you have chosen. So you're going to have to first choose a market and then it will tell you very visually where specifically you want to invest at each size room. You can find that in the price labs. They're called market dashboards. And if you use my code optimize, you're going to get two of them for free. And you are also going to get one revenue estimate for free, which is an, also another tool that price labs has just built out until next time. Happy hosting. Happy hosting.